Okay, so a few weeks ago I made a video about my 10 favorite completed manga series of all time and I said I would do another one about my 10 favorite ongoing series. That video took me forever to do and ended up being really long, so I decided I was only going to talk about my 5 favorite ongoing series instead. <sighs> it's not, not gonna happen. I couldn't even confidently decide on my top 15, let alone 10, so coming up with 5 just seemed impossible. However, after literal hours of deliberation, I finally came up with 10 ongoing series that I feel really, really good about. I decided to add criteria, and that criteria is excitement. See, I buy a lot of books, therefore I have to prioritize what I read and in which order, and I usually start reading what I'm most excited about, or looking forward to the most. The series that made it in this list are the ones I'm constantly always really excited about, and can't help but read as soon as I get them. So with all that said, let's get into it. Before we get started though, I'd like to welcome you to Manga Analysis, where I do little videos about the manga I've been reading. If you like what you see and would like to see more, make sure to subscribe and leave a like, maybe even uh, leave a comment. Let's, uh, let's get a conversation going. Kaiju number 8 Okay, so starting with something a little strange, this series made this list even though I've only read the first two books. Which is wild. It beat out a few series that I've been invested in for years. Why is that? It's just that good. Honestly, if the next three titles are just as good as the first two, I could see this one going up in ranking. Easily. I mentioned this bad boy in my perfect first volume video, and the second volume was just as amazing. The series is doing such a great job with its characters. I don't know what it is, but already just two books in, I'm already so invested in all these soldiers, and some of them have only really been shown in a few panels. The chemistry the they have with one another is just unreal. Plus, add in the slow yet ever-present mystery of our main character and why he is what he is, and you got yourself a banger. Go with the clouds, North by Northwest. So I've spoken about this series a few times now, and it's no secret that I love it. I honestly wish it was higher in this list, but unfortunately it's getting to the point where releases are taking forever to come out with, which sort of dampens my excitement. I know I'm going to have to go back and reread the last few books, which isn't the funnest thing when you already have tons of books to read. Like the next book, the sixth one is supposed to be scheduled to come out in September of 2023 or something. What the heck is that all about? Regardless, this series is by far one of the best pieces of manga literature I've had the pleasure of reading. Awesome characters, a wonderful mystery, Iceland, like Iceland is cool, and that makes a great setting for a story, and the art is absolutely stunning. Can't go wrong having this series in a top 10, that is for sure. Rent a Girlfriend Oof, no shame exclaiming to the world that Rent-A-Girlfriend pumps me up. Seriously, I love the series. I know there's tons of hate floating around for it, but I'm still digging it. The releases are also super swift and consistent, and that's really, really nice. I'm starting to see the cycle of repetitiveness, but I'm still so invested in the unlikely duo that is Chizuru and Kazuya. Buddy does not deserve her, but I will say, I do prefer him over the usual harem protagonist and that at least he knows he sucks. Most don't. He does though. I'm actually at the point in the series where Kazuya just did a really cool thing and it's got me wishing he could be like that a little more often. Still, I'll keep reading for Chizuru, always. Drifting Dragons Another series I've mentioned a few times on this channel. I love this series and it has not disappointed me yet. I remember in my first review about it I mentioned that it felt sort of episodic without a real clear objective to the plot. That is still sort of true, but lately the arcs seem to have been lasting longer and the current one is actually really interesting and delves deeper into the world's political climate and it's not revolving around dragons as much, which sounds weird since dragons are literally everything in the series, but it's actually kind of refreshing to see good old human warfare and political agendas being flipped on their heads. No doubt it'll go back to the usual after this arc is over, but I appreciate how it was able to deviate from the norm for this one. I also love the focus character for this arc, and it features a handful of past characters I didn't think we'd ever see again. So kudos for that. Drifting Dragon just keeps on piling that quality, consistent manga love, and for that alone it merits a position in this list. Jujutsu Kaisen just shy of the top 5 is Jujutsu Kaisen. Now, I've only really gotten into the series recently and the first few books didn't impress me as much as I wish they had. However, it really kicks it up a notch for me right after book 7 or so, essentially where season 2 of the anime would pick up. I'm really, really enjoying how cutthroat the series is. For a shonen, I think it goes pretty hard. It's really brutal and sometimes borders on horror, and it keeps the friendship speeches to a minimum. I'm always shocked at the amount of people that we see die in this series, like some of them are main characters, 
What is this, a battle royale? <laughs> Jeez. Add to that some genuinely really intriguing lore and you got me hooked. I feel like it's also doing a good job at limiting the power creeping since the cast is large and we don't always see the same people fighting. The main character is getting stronger and fights stronger baddies, but we also see tons of other already established super powerful characters fight with other super strong villains, which is fun. Never does it feel like just another villain coming to take the last bad guy's spot. The flow of characters is really, really well done. I will say I think the anime is a little more polished and delivers for me a better experience, but it's not a series I want to wait years on. I always feel like I want to know what's next immediately, which is a really good sign. Komi can't communicate. If you would have asked me six months ago if Komi would have made this list, I probably wouldn't have said yes. But here we are with Komi in my top five. Komi has a super slow start for me. It was always really funny and cute, but it took a while to really grip me, to really take a hold of me. From the start, it always just felt like, uh, oh boy, I wonder what kind of new friend Komi's gonna make this book. Oh, I bet they'll be wacky, ha ha ha. Which is fine, but not really what I was hoping for. However, two things have happened. One, Kosuke and Itomi. Eventually, Komi's brother and Tadano's sister start to become regular characters and even have their own full sections. And they're honestly such a wonderful change of pace. And they're really funny. I almost wish they had their own series. I love their dynamic a little more than Tadano's and Komi since it's genuinely difficult to gauge Kosuke's feelings about anything and Itomi's just so loud and obnoxious and friendly that I can just imagine how brutal it must be for Kosuke. I love that. And the second thing... The second big thing, the biggest thing, the romance. The romance finally starts picking up, and I love it. And that's all I'm gonna say. J'aime ça moi la romance dans mes mangas. Spy Family. Spy Family is where it's at, baby. The amount of complexity and depth that goes into this comedy is honestly kind of intimidating. I feel like most times you read or watch a comedy and you're like, wow, the production quality for this sure is not incredible, but it's cool, it's just for laughs, so it doesn't matter, lol, 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 lol. But then you read Spy Family that has genuinely stellar world building, an amazing plot, real stakes, an immaculate cast, and splendid art, and you're like, wow, so, so it can be done. Seriously though, not much to say about Spy Family. It does the whole spy shtick thing really well, so that's cool, and it's hilarious. I'm actually super invested in the whole political plot side of things. Like, I almost kind of want things to speed up in the rest of the story just so that we can get a little bit more of that part. Like, what the heck is going on? Why is the bad guy trying to destroy the, the world, you know? I'm just, but hey, I'm okay waiting because in the meantime, I'm just going to keep laughing and having a good time. Nothing wrong with that. My Hero Academia I have a love-hate relationship with this series. On one hand, I think it's really good and I'm stoked to finally get a chance to talk about it. On the other hand though, it did spawn the Gentle Criminal arc, which I think is one of the worst arcs ever written in manga. I hated that entire arc, which is wild because it came right after one of my favorite arcs ever. I had almost lost faith in My Hero Academia and for a while I wasn't really excited about it. Fortunately, the last three to four books, nay. The last six books, I must say, have been absolutely incredible. I am once again a proud MHA fan, and I stand at the peak of the Shonen Mountain once more. This series is kind of what rekindled my enthusiasm for Shonen again. I had stayed far away for many years considering myself above it all, you know, as someone who enjoys more mature intellectual literature, but My Hero Academia brought me back and I'm super stoked about it. You're doing it, kid, and keep it up. Don't toy with me, Miss Nagatoro. Speaking of being above shonen and only consuming intellectual literature, let's talk about Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro. See, I am a man of culture, and when I stop, I'm not even gonna try to do the whole cultured man who appreciates a girl stepping on him. I just love this series, man. I love me some Nagatoro. Komi and Shizuru are great. Don't get me wrong, they're very nice. But Nagatoro? She's gotta be my favorite manga girl at the moment. She's just so clumsy in her affection. And while some may call it psychotic, I call it endearing. Cute even. It's those eyes, man. It's those eyes. While Rent-A-Girlfriend will eventually get stale and annoying, I'm sure, I've accepted it, I can't really see that being the case for this series. It makes me laugh so much. It has such a small cast, but the chemistry between them is unparalleled. And it's just so, so, so wholesome. I just don't know what else to say. I, I love this series. Number one. Golden Kamui. 
All right, well, if you've seen some of my videos, you might have seen this coming. Listen, I'm not going to say that Golden Kamui is the best ongoing series right now. But I think Golden Kamui is the best ongoing series right now. There, I said it. After I just said I wasn't going to. The plot, the setting, the characters, the lols, the conflicts, the way everything just flips around. It's the super weird prevalent penis references all the time. Like, all of it is just so good. I can't get over how many times I've thought to myself, Well, I don't know where this series is gonna go from here. It doesn't seem like much it can do now. That BAM! Drops a giant WTF on you and you just... You just take it, you accept it, and you love it. Not only do you praise the series for what it's doing to you, for all the wackiness it's subjecting you to, but you thank it. Yes, when I read book 24, and my eyes read what the book had to offer, I was scarred, I was scared, I was bruised by it. But the pain hurts so good. If you've read that book, you know what I'm referencing. Seriously, if you haven't picked up the series yet, please pick it up. Read it all, all of it. If you can't do that, at least watch the anime. It's also very remarkable. Just do this. For you, you deserve Golden Kamui. You just do. Well, that was my current favorite 10 ongoing manga series. I had so many more I wanted to include in here, but alas. I will just mention these three honorable mentions. The Way of the House Husband, Mashal, and Call of the Night. These are all series that I'm absolutely loving and honestly, depending on my mood, could have made this list. Making these lists are hard, and you know what, I think I'm done for a bit. Perhaps next year I'll make an updated version, maybe some of these series will have been completed by then, and who knows, maybe new series are going to come out and usurp some of these out of this list. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts. What are some of your favorite ongoing manga series? Are there any of yours that I mentioned in this video? If so, let me know which ones. If not, please tell me what you would have included instead. I hope you enjoyed this little video, and if you did indeed enjoy it, consider subscribing. This was Manga Analysis, and I'll see you in the next one.